Welcome to Accelerate Your Wealth, a podcast by Rebecca Robertson, founder and director of Evolution Financial Planning. We hope you enjoy the show and please feel free to leave us a review. It really does help. Feel free to connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram or head over to www.rebeccarobertson.co.uk or our sponsor, Evolution Financial Planning for regulated advice on www.evolutionfinancialplanning.co.uk forward slash podcast. Hello and welcome to this podcast. I believe it's number 92, although we've recorded over 100. Listen to episode 91 to understand why. (laughs) I won't bore you with it again. Um, This session is a new subject I haven't spoke about before. Um, Possibly in some sort of context, roughly, but not in any real degree. Um, But based on the fact two of our top seven all-time podcast downloads is me talking about investment and when to invest and how to start investing I thought I would bring that conversation along a little bit and talk about risk so I think we're going to call this podcast eight ways to reduce your risk investing or eight ways on things to consider when investing to reduce your risk I don't know I need to shorten that down a little bit Um, but we're going to talk about risk and we're going to talk about eight ways to understand risk. So typically men are more risk aware. Um, they are typically more um, adaptable and accepting of risk, which is why they tend to invest and have always invested. I think culturally um, it's been a, more of a norm that men will and can invest, whereas um, I speak to women every day, all the time, well, they haven't invested before. I'll give you two examples this week. A lady has invested some money, very good, um, inherited some money, but she's very good at saving. She has um, all the right pots in all the right places, getting 7% return here, 3.5% t- then there, but hasn't got a clue about investing and what it entails and what's involved. And then I've got another client who's got like a business of £2.5 million turnover, earning really well um, and is now starting to realize that she needs to be doing things that she wouldn't have considered before. Now, the people that tend to come to me aren't what I would call self-starters. They're not gonna go and set up an investment platform. Then they're gonna, they're not gonna, um, they don't tend to um, monitor the stock prices on a daily basis and buy and sell shares. But they're they're self-starters, they sort of, They feel that they don't need a financial advisor. People that come to financial advisors, they tend to, and that's not to say that people that listen to my podcast don't necessarily um, fit in either category, um, but clients that come to me to ask for financial advice, they tend to be new to investing or have a financial advisor already um, because they don't want the ownership, they don't have the time, they don't want the ongoing responsibility, and it feels like another job when they have enough to do already. So as a financial advisor, what we're trying to do is look at the client's risk profile. So I'm going to be talking to you today about risk and there's ways of uh, dampening or reducing or considering how that risk can be reduced. Because particularly for me, my clients are adverse to risk. They are risk adverse. And I've had clients coming at a very low risk profile, have no aptitude really for investing, but they still are desperate to start somewhere because they see the potential. Now, one thing I will mention is when I was recording this last year, inflation was only going to start, it was starting to go high. Um, And um, now it has been high and it should start coming back down by the summertime. Um, And bank base rate wasn't as high as it is now. So as of now, savings are great. But 12 months ago, savings were rubbish. And that's what happens with that, that, that volatility, right? We don't normally see so much volatility. So that's um, there's not as much volatility is wrong, probably the wrong term. I'm just trying to liken it so people to so understand the, the, the concept is that savings interest rates are around four or five percent, for example. Whereas 12 months ago, you wouldn't get those kind of returns and their money's relatively guaranteed sitting in a savings account or a cash ISA account or a 90 day notice account. They're, they're you're pretty much guaranteed the money will you'll get the you'll get the money back at the end right 
um, unless that bank went bankrupt, but you are covered by the financial compensation scheme. Um, not compensation scheme, sorry, that's something else. I've got my, my yeah, that's something else. But your money's protected up to 85,000. Um, so therefore, um, it is unlikely that the bank will go bankrupt. The, the Bank of England tend to, or the government tend to bail them out before that happens because I don't want to see uh, panic in the markets. Anyway, that's another subject, but it's it's still relevant. It's still something to have called contextual contextual um, understanding around the subject. Um, so, but in, so interest rates were were lower last year, therefore savings rates were lower last year. So, in what's going to happen in the future? Yes, you can get good savings rates now, and if you can get one fixed uh, for money that you might need access to in the next year or two then that's great, brilliant, because you can fix that at a higher, where it's now at a higher rate. I foresee that once inflation starts to dampen towards the end of this year, bank base rate will start to come down. And in the next 12 months time, I can see bank base rate being closer to sort of the 3% mark. And therefore your savings interest rates will be getting closer sort of to, to 2 3% mark. Now that's not great because um, inflation is higher. Inflation, inflation is higher than what you can currently get in savings rates anyway, but there's this sort of ratio of risk and reward with how much risk am I willing to take for the relevant reward? So for a lot of people, inflation might be over 10%, but they're getting 4% in savings. There's a 6% difference, but they know at the end of, I don't know, 90 days notice or a one year bond or instant access, that they can actually get they can get the money so there is no risk as such whereas when you start investing so that's saving but when you start investing it means you're taking your money and you're investing it into a portfolio or a company or a uh, pooled fund of some description depending on what you do and how you do it and you are going to be taking a certain amount of risk with doing that. Now, I'm not talking about products and pensions and ISAs, and I'm, I'm not talking about products today. I'm talking about investment strategy. So with that, you're taking you, your your money is not guaranteed. You see it all the way at the bottom of the statements, right? That your 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 capital is at risk, and that's quite scary because especially for people that haven't had money before there's like a point where you're like i wouldn't invest i wouldn't invest no oh, okay i've got a bit more money now maybe i could play with some of this money or maybe i should actually there's a bit more serious money now maybe i need to get some advice and maybe i need to take this a little bit more seriously or maybe i should start thinking about investing now because there's only so long that those savings higher savings rates can apply so i'm going to be talking to you um about risk so the first thing is is I've, I've talked before about shifting from saving to investing in previous podcasts um that might be um i'm not sure which episode that is to be fair um i would have to look back i think it's like how to start investing um it was around maybe summer 2020 um so apologies i i, I just never remember more off the top of my head there's so many um but for the um risk part of it and when you're actually going to start investing, then there's eight things that you can consider when it comes to taking risk with your investments. So the first one is your risk profile. So if you go onto a website and they get you to do like an attitude to risk profile, um, you will come out as a certain profile. So it could be five out of 10, um, or it could be the, the, the gradings out of 10, uh, out of 10. So you could be one really low, 10 really high, or it could be out of five. So you could be, you know, they have five stages and you're maybe in the middle somewhere or higher or lower. Um, or they could be out of, they might have three options and it's like high, medium, low, really simple stuff. And the questions that you answer will be deemed as to which risk profile you're willing to take. So that, um, that leads you into sort of what kind of money your way the, that investment strategy for whichever company that relates to will deem how much of your money is taken, what degree of risk risk with it. So you have safer stuff like commodities and property and gilts and bonds, which is safer, and then equities, which is a higher risk. So that's shares in companies, and there's different degrees within. The kind of companies and where that is um 
so your risk profile understanding your risk profile and what that actually means to you is the first thing to understand so to understand actually um how much risk am i willing to take and what proportion of money do i want invested because you actually might invest but actually only 30 percent of it is invested in equities so shares in companies on the actual stock market the rest of it could be in what is deemed to be safer it doesn't mean it's safer like a savings account safer but it's deemed to be a safer asset class so that's the first thing the second thing is not investing money that you feel that you might need to need in the next five years it's money that you might need to buy a house it's money that you might need to pay for something in the next five years um, you could save, use investment money to save and accumulate for future costs, maybe like 10, 15 years time. But you certainly don't want to be investing money that you will need in the next five years. So making sure that you've got that emergency, you've got your backup money, that you have spare cap capital to play with. Um, number three is your asset allocation. So um, it sort of leads on to that risk profile element where it's not that your um, your asset allocation is not just in the UK, it's not just in America, it's not just in UK bonds, for example, that your asset allocation is not only correct to your risk profile, but it's um, a broad enough spectrum that you are not investing in one way. And that leads on to number four, which is diversification. Diversify, diversify, diversify. And the more that you can do that, the better. And that's something that I'm doing more and more and more and more of with my clients. Um, and what that means is that you don't just necessarily have one fund, that you possibly have multitude of funds, depending on how much money we're talking about. So that you're not just invested in UK bonds, but you're invested in US um, bonds and gilts, for example. There might be that you build in um, more in the UK and less in the US, for example, that equity wise, you're, you're, you're diversifying, that you're not only diversifying by geographical location, but you're also diversifying by industries. So you're looking at retail, you're looking at technologies, biotechnics. Um, there's a host of, you know, many, many different industries that you're then invested in. Um, so having a diverse portfolio is also crucial. And I'll, I'll just bring in ethical investing into that for a second. And that is, is a sort of a bit of another subject. I did do a series of ethical investing um, back. It was like, I want to say sort of, Gosh, actually, I think it was 2021. Yeah, I think it might be 2021. And there's that, there's probably about eight episodes where I actually have investment managers come in and talk about ethical investing. So if you're particularly interested in that, then go back and check those out. Um, number five is time timing or time in the markets. So if you're looking for a quick win, a quick buck, you're somebody that's sort of invested short term and you want to buy and then sell. Um, that is a whole other skill set. And that's not really what I'm about or financial advisors are about. We're not traders. We're not on the stock market trading, you know, here and there and trying to make quick wins. It's a bit like property investing. People have different strategies. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, um, but um, it's much higher risk. What I'm talking about is time in the market. So just letting your investments do what it needs to do. Um, and over time, historically data so historic data not not an indication of future performance historic data tells us that on average the stock market makes money um and so does the guilt market even um, the guilt market guilt and bond market are doing quite well in this year 2023 better than previous years um number six is pound cost averaging so that's where you're basically taking a lump sum or a monthly amount and you're spreading it out over a period of time. So you're buying shares at different price points. Um, it gives you a certain leverage to your money rather than buying it all in one way at one time. Number seven is cost. So with risk, you have returns. You have a level of volatility. I'll explain that in a second. And you get a level of returns based on that volatility that you're willing to take, the level of risk you're willing to take. The net effect of that is after costs. 
So that is a risk, you know. So if you're getting, you've done all this work, done all the due diligence, but you're ch ch being charged an astronomical about amount of money, you shouldn't be in any charge any more than 2% on the overall portfolio. That's usually my goal, depending on how the investment strategy is and the investment platform. And that's including my IFA costs. Um, you know, if you're getting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent returns, but you're getting charged two or three percent, more than two percent, three, four, five, six percent, then you're eating into that margin, and therefore you are effectively taking more more risk, um, because you're allowing two higher charges on your portfolio, and over time, that has a massive impact, charges and also inflation. So that sort of increasing with inflation. Uh, increasing the payments with inflation means that in 10 years time that money will still be worth what it should be worth so actually I, technically that's number i'll give you a free one there <laughs> number eight um is understanding volatility so there's a sweet spot i feel where you might have a portfolio where let's just say the last 10 years a medium risk portfolio has got six percent returns over a 10-year period and then, however, a seven risk profile, so there's more risk, um, has got six and a half percent returns. But the volatility ratio between them was one percent. So there was not a massive amount of volatility risk in comparison from a five to a six. But then when you shifted to an eight, the volatility ratio increased to, say, eight or nine percent. But actually, the returns compared to a seven risk profile, were closer, maybe you got returns around 7%. So it was only half a percent higher than a risk profile seven in terms of returns, but you were taking a proportion of nearly two or three times the risk. Um, and that's what a sweet spot is. So you want the sweet spot where you're not taking as much, you know, a comfortable level of risk, but actually not, um, not having... Um, that you're getting the returns for that level of volatility. So I hope that makes sense the way I've described that. So there's eight slash nine, technically, um, ways to dampen, reduce your risk when investing. I hope you've enjoyed this session today. Um, I've covered a lot and I've covered it quite quickly, um, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do leave us a review. Do let me know if you want to hear about anything else. Um, and please do share with your friends and family um, when you feel appropriate. Um, take lots of care and I'll see you at our next episode. Speak to you soon. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Accelerate Your Wealth. For further help or to connect with Rebecca directly, please head over to the website www.rebeccarobertson.co.uk where you can find further information on our planner, book and how to further maximise your wealth. Our sponsor, Evolution Financial Planning for regulated advice on pensions, investments, mortgages, insurances on www.evolutionfinancialplanning.co.uk forward slash podcast.